Hey, how's it going everyone today? I'm actually testing a new live setup uh, for the Facebook group here. I've got a couple different programs I'm trying, so I'm going to try this one first before I even head to the shop today. And I noticed uh, David Savoy had put up a post here, and I'm going to see if how this comes in, how clear it is, this video here. I'm going to refresh the page. I can actually work it right through my computer, which is pretty cool. And here we go, so I can see it. I can answer any questions. Okay, so back to David Savoy. I noticed he had asked a question. He said there was nobody within 200 miles of him who cleaned rugs. Uh, what does he need to get started with? Well, I mean, I'm a little bit biased, but I highly recommend our rug cleaning on a budget program. I mean, you're going to make a lot of money with it. It's going to save you a lot of trouble, and you're not going to run into a lot of heartaches. Because let me tell you what, if you mess up one $1,000 rug, $5,000 rug, $10,000 rug, and you didn't spend a few hundred hours for a course, it didn't really make, make any sense. So we offer a course that helps you uh, ID carpets, how to uh, eliminate any issues that might arise, and how to relieve yourself of liability. Because let me tell you what, a lot of liability comes with cleaning rugs. So I can help you with that. And it's very, very good, and it also shows you how to do it with your own equipment. If you have uh, just a basic machine, couple of little things to go with it and the right chemistry because you want to make sure uh, that you don't cause the colors to run or to migrate to other parts of the rug and do some damage so my whole point is if you're going to get started in something with rugs at least get a basic training and some of these training programs out there are around five ten thousand dollars and they're very in-depth it's a lot to assimilate and you just go to a course and you lose all that time and all that money and all that downtime but with us, if you go to the tmfacademy.com and you pick up the rug cleaning on a budget, I'm not sure exactly how much it is, it's between three and $500, but you're gonna make that money back in one or two rugs. I'm gonna show you how to maximize your profits, how to make the most out of a rug, how to estimate it, how to ID it, what chemistry to use, and that's just a few things I can think of right off the top of my head. Also, how to write things up in such a way that, that you're not held responsible for it. Uh, just one example. Uh, let's think about urine. Urine goes in what? As an acid, which is good for rugs. It doesn't hurt rugs. It doesn't smell good. It's not healthy for it, but it won't hurt the rug. However, we all know that urine turns into alkaline salt, what? 24 to 48 hours later. So you've got this urine stain sitting inside the carpet, right? And you come in there to clean this rug, and you go in there and you start to clean it. If you clean on the acidic side, what, what happens is that alkaline that's inside of that rug from the urine can cause the colors to shift or even come out and who's gonna be responsible for that guess what if you don't go ahead and get a waiver signed in their own handwriting or something of that nature you're gonna be responsible for it so it's little tips and tricks like that that I walk you through and help you so I'm gonna try refreshing this new program I've got here so it works here so far it looks like the clarity is good hopefully the sound is good can't measure the sound from here. Okay, I'm keeping the sound off on the computer itself. You can probably hear the birds in the background. They're pretty loud this morning. Uh, but like I said, you know, it's not hard to clean rugs, and we have a product called Rug Smack too. And it's designed at a neutral pH where it can give the maximum amount of surfactants and cleaning agents to safely clean just about any rug out there. Now, if you've got a really bad bleeder, we'll help you with that, and that's in the program. So definitely keep that in mind. Rugs really aren't that difficult. They're just a little bit tedious. And so if you know some of the shortcuts that we know, it'll help you a lot. What's up, Marco? How you doing today? Uh, hopefully you can hear me clearly. If you can, if you would chime in and let me know, I'd appreciate it. Trying out a new program that kind of works from the top of the computer. And I can still see the computer in front of me, so it's kind of cool. I'm working on a couple different programs. I got something planned for in the future here pretty soon. Clear. Okay, thanks, Mel. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. So, Davis Savoy, if you see this video, I am kind of talking about you and rugs. You know, uh, rugs are a great thing to get into, but they can cause you a lot of headaches. You know, uh, how do you identify if they're natural? Uh, cool. Well, I appreciate that. How can you identify if they're natural? How can you identify if it's a man-made or if it's polyester, or whether it's olefin, whether it's uh, nylon? You know, all those things make a huge difference, and you can adjust your chemistry accordingly because if you don't you're going to end up damaging somebody's rug and you're going to be in a heap of trouble plus we show you a couple little cool tools that you can pick up they're inexpensive along with whether you have a portable whether you have a truck mount so remember when you're lacking in one area if you don't have all the 
$100,000 setup, which we're actually investing in right now. We've already picked up a centrifuge. We've got the, you know, the beaters. We're getting, breaking up everything we can, the rug pit, everything. We're building a huge system. As a matter of fact, if you want to come to Tidewater, uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and you want to see our setup, feel free to. But at least have that rug cleaning on a budget. Good Lord. You know, four, five hundred, three to five hundred dollars. I'm not sure of the price of it. But, you know, you can easily charge, you know, two, three, four, five, and even up to ten dollars a square foot for a rug. But you need to know what you're talking about. You need to be able to walk in confident knowing how to clean it and how to take care of it. Most of the times you'd like to clean it back at your place. If you got a small location, you can still do it with the rug cleaning on the budget. But Rug Smack was kind of amazing. You can clean it right on location too. But the more you know about the rug and the more you know about rug cleaning, the higher dollar you can get out of the client. Rightfully so, right? You're an expert. They're not. What's up, Dave? How you doing, man? Weren't we just talking in private in a private message, Dave? Yeah, we're talking about travertine, weren't we? Travertine. That's another thing, Dave. We're actually setting up at our place. Beside our complete rug studio, we're going to have a complete tile, stone, and grout place where you can actually come in and we'll teach you how to clean it, how to seal it, how to color seal. We'll teach you how to hone, how to grind, how to polish, do everything you want to do with stone. We're going to have a bunch of stone products there and have some teachers come in and help. But we're getting this completely set up. We've got a, a complete office set up. We've got a complete showroom, which most people have already seen that. And uh, we just got a warehouse, and now we're getting a two-bay garage where we can actually work on equipment, install equipment, and we can set up this rug cleaning uh, facility. So if you're in Virginia Beach, Virginia, feel free to stop by sometime. Be glad to have you there. I'm glad you guys can hear me clearly. This won't be the time of day that I'll normally be doing the videos. But uh, uh, Dave, I think we were talking about the travertine. And you had mentioned uh, if it had the travertine had, uh, if it was sealed, could you go ahead and clean it with Grout Master? Absolutely, absolutely. Because remember, uh, most sealers, proper sealers for travertine, are impregnating sealers, so they've gone down inside of the stone. So you don't have to worry about that. But you want to get the stone clean as possible. Some travertine, whether if it's not filled, especially, it's going to hold a lot of dirt and the clefts, the grooves, and the little valleys in there. So you want to really get that out of there and Grout Master will help you quite a bit so it's something to keep in mind hey it's a beautiful day here in virginia beach it's like 80 degrees sunny very low humidity no complaints whatsoever it's gorgeous so i thought i'd come on the back porch here take a look and try out this new program it's so cool because i'm able to have a camera set up here i'm able to have access to my computer and read any post and it will disappear because on the phone when you're doing a live video all your comments disappear so fast I can't kind of keep up with them so and I know a lot of guys are out working today so I understand so that's why I'm just kind of testing this thing but when I actually go live and go with the new program I'm coming out with I'm going to be doing it at uh, in the evenings and I'll probably have a set date or set day each week I'm interested on, on that class which one Marco how you doing Jeff um, which one are you talking about Marco you're talking about tile stone grout cleaning and honing and polishing or are you talking about the rug cleaning? I thought about doing both at the same time. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? You know, have them side by side and rotate back and forth. You know, we could have this uh, tile and grout on one side. What's up, Mel? Oh, awesome. Glad to hear that, Mel. I appreciate that, man. Australia, land down under. Appreciate you really supporting us. It's always nice to have uh, support worldwide. We've really worked hard The tile and stone. Yeah, tile and stone is big, Marco. You know, and I've learned so much over the last couple of years. I've taken a couple in-depth classes myself, and I've been testing it and trying it. And stone is very profitable. It's not as hard as people make it out to be. However, if you don't know what you're doing, just like I was talking about with the rugs earlier, you're going to do some damage. You're going to mess up some expensive floors. Here's the cool thing about floors. Rugs, they're very difficult to fix if you mess them up. You're going to have to probably send them out and have them died or know somebody who actually dies. What's up, Rob? How you doing, bud? He's a stone man. But when it comes to stone, if you do some damage to stone, for the most part, it can usually be corrected. That's the cool thing. But why go deeper into the stone than you have to if you just avoid the mistakes? So that's what I basically want to help people do, is help them avoid the mistakes. Some people walking up behind my house here. I live on the golf course. And uh, they probably wonder what the heck I'm doing talking into my camera and uh, into my setup over here. But hey. It is what it is, right? 
All right, so rugs, stone. And uh, we've got some cool things coming along the way when it comes to rugs and stone. But I really want to invite you, especially come springtime. I mean, what I'm planning on probably doing. Like we broke up a little bit. Yeah, I'm making a little money. Can't complain. Uh, I'm planning on, by springtime, having everything all ready to go. Uh, we should have the whole facility completely completely ready to go from top to bottom. Talk to us about clay tile. If you're talking about the tail date, um, they're coating on top of those things. There's generally a topical coating on top of those clay tiles. And you can get yourself into a nightmare real quick if you're not careful. You must not know Rob Allen is. Yeah, exactly, Zion. So, you know, that stuff can be, that stuff can be really be tough, man. Unless you know how to strip, and I'm talking about some serious amount of stripping on those floors, you're better off just not even mess with them. Exactly, Zion. And uh, maybe you're one of the people who doesn't mind tackling it. But for myself, fortunately here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, being, uh, we're not really, I'd say over half the homes, maybe 75% of the homes we have right now, um, have mostly carpets wall to wall throughout a lot of people are moving towards stone and hard surfaces but we don't really see a lot of clay or satile however you pronounce it you know always i hear people pronounce it both ways i'm only going to say it the other way okay or the other couple ways but if you've got that we don't see it much and generally when we do get it we actually just don't even mess with it for the most part uh, because most people don't want to pay for it and it's usually in an older home but if you're over like in california arizona or florida down there, you're going to see a lot of that down there. And I've seen a lot of guys on the, on the groups and the forums get themselves into trouble because it's, you think they're just going to start cleaning this thing. You know, they're, they're working off a little bit of that topical coating. And then they, then they realize, hey, I'm going to have to strip this thing. The rugs, will a garage be a good setup? Yes, I've seen people working in a one car garage, only, but I prefer a two car garage. If you could do a two car garage, that would be a, you know, definitely more appropriate but you can do it in one car garage and it also depends on your neighborhood you know in my neighborhood we have uh, you know association that won't let you do anything I mean you can have a commercial vehicle but it has to be in your garage in our neighborhood um, uh, the majority of the homes especially on the first couple of streets all the garages face the side they wouldn't even let you have garages facing the street because they don't want people to see dirty dirty garages or unorganized garages how about that so a garage is fine but check with your neighborhood make sure it's okay talk about price per square footage for tile and grout and stone cleaning um, you know Dave I go in there my course pretty good and now you're looking towards the course but uh, let, let's talk about tile pricing first I guess tile pricing I would say a lot of guys go from 50 cents a square foot up to two dollars square foot we try to maintain two dollars square foot because why? Because, and we also offer them a free estimate to go out to their homes. And the reason we do that is because if you go out there and it's a small area, you've only got 100 square feet or 200 square feet, what are you going to charge them 50 cents a square foot? What are you going to charge $50 to go out there and clean it? No. So it's best to start high and work your way down low. So we'll start off around $2 square foot. We'll let people know, you know, it can range anywhere from 50 cents to $2 square foot depending on whether it's natural stone, whether it's man-made stone, uh, whether it is um, epoxy grout, whether it's been color sealed, whether you want to seal it, all those factors weigh in, Mrs. Jones, but we'll be glad to come out and give you a free estimate. And if you like, we can go ahead and clean it while we're there. You know, people love that. And as long as you keep them talking and show them you know what you're talking about, you're not gonna have a problem. I took your tile course line, I'm starting to get into the business. Hey man, I'm telling you what, it's very profitable. I can get a dollar per square foot minimum charge, $200. There you go. But you know what? Don't limit yourself. Sometimes people don't even know what they have in their own home. You know, so when it comes to tile, grout, and stone, I'd personally rather go, go out or send my text out to give a free estimate and tell them we'll be glad to clean it or seal it or whatever you want to do right then and there. And uh, we're also glad to give them a demo. People love demos. Take some grout master in there. A towel we have a little uh, a little carry around that we keep inside there and we'll keep some grout master in there we'll keep a little bit of acid in there we'll keep some um, little brushes in there for the grout brushes we'll keep some terry cloth towels some business cards some booties some gloves 
those kind of little things make a difference, you know. And also, some how about some color seal strips? I've got plastic strips. You can look at different types of color seal. We can do a sample of a color seal, like under an area or an inconspicuous place, maybe in a closet or something like that. So they get an idea for it. And you can explain to them all the features and the benefits of uh, color sealing, because color sealing, man, is extremely profitable. And if you got the right kit, it's not that hard to do. You'd be surprised. If you've got the right applicator, you've got the right product, it's not hard to do. It holds up. The key to color sealing, the key to color sealing is preparation. You know, it's like painting your car. You go out and paint a car and you spray paint, paint, spray paint right over the dirt. What's going to happen? Paint's going to come right off. So you hear all these guys complaining, well, the color seal doesn't hold up and stuff like that. It does hold up. Okay? It's just that whoever put it on there either used a cheap product or they didn't apply it properly. Application and uh, preparation especially is the most important thing of all you got to get it clean you got to get it completely prepared so it will adhere to the uh, to the concrete surface and uh, for the most part you can't really color seal just so you know epoxy I know guys who do it but I highly recommend not doing epoxy grout I'm taking your upholstery cleaning course this weekend why do some cleaners like dislike cleaning like cleaning upholstery I see it all the time. And it's in every house, Josh. It doesn't even make sense. I like doing upholstery. Usually a lot of times, guys are using the wrong tools. If you've got something like pick up a dry master tool from us, very easy. You know, it's um, just so simple to use. That makes all the difference. You don't have to sit in there pulling the trigger all the time. It's very ergonomic. It's lightweight. It cleans well and it dries fast. So I think if you're using the proper tools and using the proper chemistry, you don't mind. Also, having a little stand-up table doesn't hurt either. You know, I'll show you a lot of tips and tricks when you're in there. And uh, there's a lot of couple of cool things you can do to go ahead and do upholstery. But you know what? Not doing upholstery cleaning is leaving a ton of money on the table. And I show you inside that video on that Team Up Academy course how to sell clients on upholstery cleaning. It's really important. What's your favorite grout sealer applicator? Darren, um, Darren that's in our course. And we have something that's kind of proprietary in the course, so we kind of like to keep it that way. Uh, you know, I don't seal the way other people seal, let's put it that way. And uh, I really try to sell people on Color Seal. Color Seal is so profitable, and it really looks so much better and holds up for a long time. Do you sell an upholstery detergent? I saw one of your videos, and the table has helped me a lot. Yeah, we do sell an upholstery detergent, we call it Revive. But you can also use our Rug Smack. A lot of guys using our rug smack, it does a fantastic job. Or you can use our um, alkaline neutralizing rinse. So they're all around, I think the Revive is around 6, six pH, 6.5 six pH. And you can take the Revive and with the Revive, anything that's really super delicate, use the Revive on it, okay? Cool, Darren. Appreciate that, man. I'd appreciate it. Look, Darren, if you don't like it, here's one thing about our courses, guys. If you don't like it, you just call me up and say, Rob, that course sucked. <laughs> and I feel confident it doesn't, but if it didn't help you at all, you call me up or just contact us, and I'll give you 100% credit to any, anything in our you know, chemistry in our store. So kind of think about that. Uh, can you go to an IICRC class and say, hey, look, you know, if I don't like the course, can I just get all chemicals instead, pre-sprays and stuff like that? Let me know how that works out for you. Okay, where were we? Daggone it. I got sidetracked. Let me see if I can pull this up on my computer. Oh yeah, about the detergents you were asking here. So when you the upholstery detergent. So let's say you got something super delicate, okay, and you're really worried about it. It might have some color transfer. Maybe you tested the back of it and you found a little bit of color transfer. Well, if that's the case, go ahead and use the Revive. Revive cleans extremely well, but it the detergents and the surfactants in it take a little bit of time to work. So just give it a little bit of agitation. Boom! It cleans great and it smells fantastic. Women love the smell of it. And also, you've got a very delicate rug. That's something that's a bleeder, use a revive. Anything, there's a, a draperies, anything, anything that's super, super delicate and you're worried about it, use a revive. Now, uh, for other upholstery that's more durable and stuff like that, let's not go into, I'm talking about, you know, even naturals right now, or even synthetics, you can go ahead and you can go ahead and use uh, either the rug smack or you can use our alkaline neutralizing rinse. And both of those are around 7 pH, they're right at neutral and they clean well. However, what if you have a, have a rat nasty, terrible term I know, but it is one that's got picked up in our industry. What if you have a rat nasty piece of upholstery? 
What are you going to do then? And generally, where do we find the rat nasty upholstery at? We find it in microfiber. And what is microfiber? Microfiber is polyester. So most products out there aren't going to clean the polyester. So that's when you take and go ahead. Uh, let's see. Rob Allen Thrower wants to be in the video. I'm going to bring him here in a second. That's why I say if you're going to go ahead and use, um, if you're going to be doing some microfiber furniture, go ahead and you can use our BioPro because that's under 10 pH. You can even use the Rob Secret Formula, the free and clear. A lot of guys use that and love it. Let's see if I can bring uh, Trey in here. He said he wants to come in. Push the button, see if it works. Yep, friends will be able to see this video. Okay. Let's see, are you there, son? I'm not seeing you, but I, put, I think I pushed all the right buttons. Let's see. Nickel hey, Rice Green Clear right. is a great choice of one. Oh, there you go. Hey, son, what's up, bud? Not much. Not much. Get some work done while you're at home, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming that way. <laughs> Don't forget, I got a little appointment this morning first. Somebody asked about the rug smack. What was that? Yes. What's the dilutions on that? So let's go take Green a look. Green Clear is a great choice of one. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Appreciate that. Go ahead, son. What are you saying? I'm going to see what, what it was for the, uh, the rug smack. I'll let, I'll let them know right now. Somebody asked in the comments. So what's the dilution how rate? Clear, how clear can you hear me talking, son? I hear you perfectly fine. Okay. You're a little bit uh, low in the volume, just so okay. you know. So I'm going to speak up a little bit. I'll speak up a little bit. I can more. hear you. All right. The dilution okay. rate on rug smack. Let's see. I'll see if I can flip this around so that way the live viewers can see it. Oh, cool. I didn't even know you could do that. So right there for oh, the do this more often, son. Yeah, there, there's different ways that they can use it for a truck mount. They can use it as a top-down pre-spray or in the gallon pump-up electric sprayer. Uh, right. Or, you know, or you can use it as an implant rug cleaning. So dilution rate for the truck mount, 16 ounces in a five-gallon tank. And then a 16-ounce and five-gallon tank metered at four to five for heavy soil. A portable is just one ounce per gallon. And then two ounce per gallon for heavy soil. And then the in-plant rug cleaning one is, is pretty much ready to use. You can mix two ounces and five gallons of warm rudder. So you're set. Yeah, you really don't even need that much inside of a portable, just so you know. Uh, you know, that's on the high end of the portable. I think we should take and readjust that a little bit. If you read that back to me again, son. What was it for the portable? The portable one was one ounce per hot water yeah, per, per 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 gallon, low to medium soil, and then two ounces okay. per gallon for hot water. I mean, with hot water for heavy soil. Yeah, I would probably go um, an ounce per five gallons. To be honest with you, and that's all you need. Please explain the combo with oxidizer booster, when an enzyme uh, works. And can you please explain how the combo works? Well, you know, if you have to have a really good, you have to have a really good enzyme, Atish to be able to work with an oxidizer. And uh, when it's powdered, it's fine. But once you liquefy it, you're gonna run into a couple of problems and can go ahead and kill it. So you're going to have to go ahead and use it within four or five hours. Just kind of keep that in mind. The enzymes are not going to hold up more than four or five hours after you've done diluted it. But man, they do work fantastic together. I know a lot of guys use the BioPro that Trey's showing right there. And they'll add in like six ounces of uh, the uh, USOR Unchained. I prefer the Sweet Breeze myself, but I like them both. Don't get me wrong. It's just a matter of what scent you like. Yeah, but if you go ahead and you put six ounces of Unchained in there with the BioPro and your, and your HydroForce, generally four to one. Oh my gosh, I'm going to tell you what, those carpets will pop. They'll smell great and it works good together. And of course, I'd like to take and go ahead and spray all the urine stains ahead of time first. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Joshua had something here. He said something. What are, what are your selling points to upsell? How do you go about wanting to offer more services to a client? Um, Easy. You know what? Ask them before you even get out to the job. That's Yeah, that really helps. Get them on the phone yeah, and start yeah, talking yeah, to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask them on the phone Trey, first. I got a question for you, Trey. Is our um, is our sales class for Team F Academy, is that available to buy or they have to buy something else with it? That's pretty How does much, that work? That, that the sales and service and then the business startup one is – Pretty much for people who um, buy like the whole entire package, they get that. No problem, Atish. So I don't believe okay. you can kind of buy it separately. But but as far as like you know selling things, sell them on the phone first. Be like, hey, you know, you need some carpet cleaning done. All right, well, you know, you need any upholstery done or any shower wall cleaning, grout cleaning. You'd be amazed of like how many people. Oh yeah, I do. Look, give me an estimate on that. Boom. So you already got it on the ticket. That's yep. quick yep. and easy. You're pl you're basically planting the seed. 
you know, a lot of people don't even know what we offer a lot of times. They don't know what you're cleaning or what you're, what you're capable of cleaning, you know. But uh, I wouldn't rush everything all in there at one time. You know, after you get them set up, you might mention, oh, by the way, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but we also clean upholstery. We clean tile and grout and stone. You know, we can do your garage floors. Hey, I, I, was, I was wondering, I'm going to be cleaning my own garage floor at this house I bought here. If anybody would like to see a live demonstration of that, let me know. I think garage floors are an excellent add yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can ask them if they got rugs too. I see uh, Brian back there hitting a couple of rugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can ask people. Yeah, you can ask people if they got rugs. So you know, the more, never leave money on the table. That's my motto. I don't want to give too much away, but you know, don't leave any money on the table. Table. What is the best for auto auto carpets? Well, uh, Kyle, how you doing today? By the way, what's up? And um. A lot of people don't realize it, but cars are 99% of the time, they are uh, polyester. So I think you can go with any of our three products. You can go with the uh, BioPro. You can go with the, yep. if you like an enzyme product. A lot of guys like the enzyme products. If it's got an odor, I'd probably go with the uh, BioPro. If it doesn't have an odor, and I'd probably go with Rob's Secret Formula, Free and Clear. Or even the, or, or or even the Super, for the Super Cap, if they want to encap it. They could, they could. I I would save the end cap probably for the seats. I don't know right. if I would end cap carpets because they're pretty nasty a lot of times. That's yeah. why I was going to mention the spike. So you might want to use the spike for that. What's the best product uh, for shower cleaning? Any way possible, including mold. Uh, we a tray show them or kick acid. Great for right. great for uh, showers. It does a fantastic job. You will take that soap scum and stuff right off of there. It's some these quart like bottles. Just get your little squirt top if you want to. You know, it comes with. You're gonna need a spray. And I prefer a spray top, you know. Uh, but we can. We usually just keep the little. Uh, what is it? Tip and pour, on top of them usually. Yeah. Tip and pour. That we just kind of hit little grout lines in front of a toilet or something like that nature. It'll get that little bit of urine out of the uh, tile, grout, and stone, especially the uh, the grout Jeez. lines in front of a toilet. Because a lot of times men can't aim correctly. I'm guessing. These work out of bad. <laughs> so uh, back to it. When you, yeah, there's the kick acid right there, as you can see it. Yeah, it's got cool Rob on there. Yeah, Rob was cool <laughs> maybe 30 years ago. What's up, Brian? How you doing? Hey, Sergio. How's it going, pal? Yep, yep, yep. Hey, show him the reefer red. That's the real cool Rob. <laughs> it's kind of pretty clear in there. I found an adjustment. I don't even know if we have reefer red on the shelves right What's now. That? We've been selling out on that. But... Yeah, there might be some down the very bottom shelf. I'm not sure. The very bottom. I'm still seeing the kick ass over the there. See it quicker. Uh, my kick ass it didn't come with a tip and pour. Um, I, I yeah, we, 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 don't, we don't, we don't, we don't sell them on it. Uh, Trey, we should go ahead and yeah, should we should we think about doing that maybe? Yeah, that's, you know, that's something to think about. Yeah, 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 cool yeah. Rub, I don't rub. know how much more it costs. us trying to keep the prices down. Could we use such high quality products? There you go. There's Reefer Red Rob. <laughs> oh man that label's a killer right there i love it ready for red that stuff works like a champ too man that's good stuff yes it will get the mold out of there uh dave you can also use a little bit of uh unchained for the mold you know but remember sometimes acids and oxidizers don't work well together oh here's another thing too whenever you use acids follow up with an alkaline okay you want to neutralize that well it's like the sun's coming up over my house here so I'm going to have to cut this short in a couple of minutes. But it looks like it's coming pretty clear. Is it uh, very clear for you, son? Yeah, very. Yep. Rob, you there? Trey? Yep, I'm here. Okay, okay. Cool, yep. cool, cool. Can you see like a little line going across there? Like a sunlit line? A little lightning piece? Yeah. Or am I just seeing it on my, yep. on my camera? Going across no, my forehead? Because the sun over there. Yep, yep, yep. Now I can see yep. it here on the computer. I'm looking at it. <laughs> Yep. So I wonder if I back up and back up the camera. Yes, there we go. There we go. Yep, that took it right out of there. Okay. So I'm learning. Hey, did my lights come in, son? Uh, no, not yet, but they are coming in today. Thanks, Blair. I think I got rid of the line now. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Well, All right. I've got I'll an appointment at 1130. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Yep, I'm gone. See you guys. All right, son. All right, take care. Yeah, Blair, I think I got that fixed, though, bud. Let's see.
Can you see it now, Blair? Or is it gone? I'm about to close this up. I'm waiting for my computer to catch up. I see there's a delay on the computer when you're watching the live video. It's good, good, cool, awesome. Appreciate that. Okay, so I think we covered a lot here. We covered uh, more things. Now, all I was going to do is just kind of basically go over a couple of things and just kind of test this program out. But we went over rugs and uh, the rug cleaning course in here. Basically, you know, because I highly recommend it because so much to cover. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. But there's so much to cover, you don't want to get yourself in trouble. So that's where, where you know, the rug cleaning on a budget comes in handy. It gives you that base, basic knowledge where you can go inside of a home or you can take it back to your place and you can get it done. We also talked about tile, grout, and stone and how we're uh, building a rug facility at our place, complete rug facility with centrifuges and everything. We have training courses. We're also going to have tile, grout, and stone training courses where you can come learn how to uh, clean, seal, color seal, and hone, grind, polish, you name it, all that, idea, everything. You're very good. Thanks, appreciate that. I appreciate that, I appreciate that a lot, man. And uh, so we'll help you with all that. So remember, if you come to Virginia Beach, we should have it all completely done by the springtime. And we'll also have truck maintenance installation, and you, just, you can just test about any type of tool we have inside of our shop, too, you know, so. Come on down and check us out. You're welcome to come check us out before then. But listen, if you're going to come to our facility, Please reach out to me on Facebook or uh, through our 800 number and let me know you're going to come so I can be there. I'd love to be able to help you in any form or fashion, but if, if I'm not there, I can't help you. I might be out of town or I just might be out running errands or I might even be in my backyard here playing some golf. <laughs> I'm flipping this around here. I don't know if I can even flip this, this new program around. Let's see if I can. Yes, I can. Let's see. Press this button here. Excuse the mess. And you can't really see it well because the sun's coming down through there now. But at my age, I put my 35 years in, you know. So a lot of times uh, I'll be out on the golf course sometimes or I'll be working or doing some errands or something of that nature. So let me know ahead of time if you want to come and visit. No problem, Brian. Uh, we definitely got to get uh, enjoyed lunch with you yesterday, by the way, Brian. And uh, so if anybody wants to come into town, feel free to. Let us know in advance. So uh, we, we covered... In this little video here, we covered upholstery, we covered tile, grout, and stone, and we covered rugs. And uh, the basic thing we learned was you really need to have the knowledge to be able, to, the more you know about it, the more you can sell it, the more money you can make off of it. Thanks, Satish. Satish, you got to come back down, brother. Seriously, come on back down here, and uh, we'll definitely have you over. You're welcome to even come stay with us, pal. You know, you're, you're a great friend, man, so come on down. We have a place to stay. we got a nice place. You know, up there, completely private quarters. You're welcome to come on down and stay, pal, and, uh, and uh, play some golf, too. I don't know if you play golf or not, but we'll definitely get out there at least drink a few beers as we drive around in my golf cart, right? <laughs> okay, guys, well, I've got an appointment here at 1130 here uh, Eastern Standard Time, so I'm going to go ahead and head out to it. And I'm going to head out to my shop. If you have any more questions on this video, feel free to ask. And uh, I'm going to play it back myself later to see how uh, the clarity of it and stuff like that and hope it works out good. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have yourself a great day. And watch out for a new video video something coming along. I don't, I don't want to say too much. No doubt about it. Cook out of Rob's. I'm game for that, Brian. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.